Hey guys, I'm back with another video and this is again going to be one of those advanced videos like the Figma design tokens that I did. Um, it's going to be more situated for developers and I guess like uh, other people are definitely free to watch it as well. But we are going to be going on a journey creating multiple widgets. I'm going to start this whole playlist off or you can even consider it a course which obviously is free uh, to show you how to actually go about creating widgets, the concepts that you need to have in your mind when creating these widgets, why creating widgets is really powerful and all of that stuff. So before we begin, do hit, this, do hit the bell icon, do subscribe and let me know what you think about this whole playlist in the comments. If I get a lot of traction, I may do other videos about creating different complex widgets as well, like maybe tables and stuff along those lines or some other things that we can probably figure out together or do a voting. But if I don't get a lot of traction that I may not just I may not go through with this whole playlist and I may just create like one or two videos because uh, I mean it's not what you guys want and I am here to create things that you guys are really interested in. So why are widgets so powerful? Obviously we have experienced plugins, plugins are extremely powerful in Figma but what's the difference between plugins and widgets? The main thing that I want you to know about widgets is a widget can actually be included directly within your Figma file. So if let me just go ahead and actually open a widget. So I'm going to open a widget here. Maybe <clears throat> let's just use this type modeler by Alexei Shashkov. I think this is a really uh, nice widget that he's done. So as you can see, we have a widget here. We can enter the title. We can enter some description. Hey, hey. We can uh, change, so this is basically a table. We can change the values in the table. This is just an input field, right? And we can go ahead and uh, move these things up and down. We can add multiple properties as well. So again, this is like a table, like just any normal table in Figma, but it's actually interactive. You can add values, you can remove values, you can change things on and so forth. And the great thing about it is, and that's the amazing thing, is the fact that when you actually export this design, I'm gonna export this design. So if I export this design, as you can see, since a widget is actually situated within the Figma document, it actually gets exported when you export it as a page, do whatever. So next time I actually wanna go ahead and add something or do some calculation and all of that stuff, I don't actually have to manually do that. If things are actually pre-programmed or programmed in a certain way in our widget, I don't have to manually go ahead and update the values. I don't have to introduce a frame or an auto layout or anything along those lines to do something. I, If I wanna move this up, I can just click on move it up. I can click down, move it down or whatever it is. Now imagine if certain smaller components in our designs that actually need to be very interactive when a client is looking at them were widgets. Like how powerful would that be? Or maybe for your own workflow when you're working on a particular project, you have a certain checklist uh, that's really custom to you. Maybe that's not available in the Figma community and you wanna create that widget for you and your team. You would be able to do that right here. And the good thing about that particular thing is you don't have to open a plugin every time you need to interact with it. With plugins, that's the problem. If something now is gonna be situated in this file, imagine it's a playlist or it's a checklist of all the things that you need to do in this file, like gather inspiration, do user research, do whatever. If that particular item is actually situated in the file, anytime you're done with user research, you can just check that off. And since you don't have to open a plugin or anything, it's gonna be very simple to interact with it. So that's pretty much some of the value that I wanted you to know about widgets. And now we're gonna talk about how to actually create them. In this initial video, even though obviously this whole playlist is gonna be really advanced and it's gonna be for people who are familiar with Figma and who are familiar with coding to a certain extent, like hey, you may have, you need to have some basic knowledge of HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and React to follow along. Um, even though most of these things are gonna be really simple, but some basic knowledge is really gonna help you. <clears throat> so without further ado, I'm just gonna start off this initial class by talking about how to create your first widget using the tools that Figma has already provided you. We're not gonna be doing anything much in terms of custom functionality. We're just going to be starting off really basic. Usually with the Figma design tokens uh, video that I did, a lot of people were having a lot of confusion because I was moving really fast, which is why I've decided to actually delve on or go through this particular concept much slower so people can easily digest it. Okay. So now that that's done, I know I've talked about it a lot, uh, let's create our first widget. So in order to create the first widget, if I go into this Figma design file, 
you can see if I go into widgets and development, I can go ahead and I can manage widgets in development. I can create a new widget. I can import a widget. If this particular option is disabled for you, you can go into a FigJam file and then you can probably uh, create the new widget directly from here. So it all depends. Um, if I, let's say, close this FigJam file, I'm gonna just go ahead and create this new widget from here. And now it's gonna ask me for my widget name. Now I am gonna write our first widget so this is going to be our first widget it can either be a figma a figma design or this particular widget can either be used only in figma design or in this file or in all uh, figma figma design files or all figjam files i'm just going to do uh, a product or a tool agnostic one by choosing both of them so i'm going to click on next now it's going to ask me should this particular widget be empty should it be a simple widget or should it be an advanced widget using fig, using iframes and browser APIs just to fetch data, like stuff along those lines. So currently we're just going to do something really simple and use the simple widget, which basically is a counter. So once you've done that, you can click on save as, and you can save this particular widget on your document, on your uh, computer in a particular place that is gonna be safe. Now, what's really important here is you should not delete this folder. If you delete this folder, um, the widget may stop working or malfunctioning and you wouldn't be able to publish it to the community uh, well or and you wouldn't be able to update the files because they, Figma does not store all of these files on their server. It actually is fetching all of these files directly from the place that you are creating it from, which is um, on the development side, uh, your computer. So you can also follow their setup guide to actually get more instructions about widgets, so on and so forth. But since I'm practically just doing this video for that, we don't have to go through it. So once you're done, uh, you can go ahead and actually drag this folder into VS Code. So I'm gonna do that. Here it is in VS Code. Let's just go ahead and actually expand it. I'm gonna go back. Actually, let me just move these side by side so you can see them. Okay. And let's just go ahead and actually remove all of these things. Okay, so one thing that I wanted to highlight is if, for example, I try to access the widget right now, I'm gonna go into development and I'm gonna, gonna click on our first widget. Let me just expand it so you can see it as well. If I try to open the widget that we just created, uh, it's gonna throw some errors. So as you can see, it says widget error and error occurred while running this widget. I'm gonna open the console. I'm gonna open it on the right. So as you can see, it says the widget template uses TypeScript. So it's saying that the TypeScript file that actually needs to run for this particular widget has not been generated. So if you actually look at our code here, uh, we're gonna go to the dist, as you can see, we have the code.js, we have the code.tsx, so the file has been generated, that's fine. But I can see that certain values are not being found. Similarly, if I go to the code.js, or sorry, code.tsx at the bottom or wherever, certain things are not being found. And the reason for that is that this Figma item or uh, package usually exists in the package.json. So here it is. So here we have some dev dependencies for this which aren't running by default or aren't installed by default. So in order to install them, as many of you may know, you just need to do npm install. If you're gonna do that, this should hopefully, uh, okay, that's fine. And hopefully again, uh, the, it's gonna install the node modules uh, folder or uh, gonna download all the packages within this node modules folder. And then you can just do an NPM build. If you do an NPM build, obviously that's not gonna run. You need to do NPM run build. Um, so once you run the build, and I'm now gonna go back to Figma, this should work technically. So if you go into development and click on our first widget, as you can see, this works now because it is fetching the components or sorry, the items necessary, the packages necessary to run this. So now the magic behind it here is it's actually interactable. So directly within a Figma file, I don't need to set up prototypes. I don't need to set up anything. This particularly is interactable and I can interact with it, do whatever. If I open this particular page in a prototype, now this is again, <clears throat> a prototype, I can not interact with this because this is only interactable if you actually have it in the file itself. So consider this as a, a an element that you're gonna use when you're going to be designing stuff, when you're going to, let's say, update data or whatever it is. The prototype view is just for the design stuff or the design prototype connections that you're going to create. So that's really important to know. And I wanna set the expectations straight. 
So once you have that, let's just go ahead and actually see what else we can do with it. One other thing that I wanted to explicitly highlight is if you actually open this widget and you open it in the left hand sidebar, as you can see, this is an auto layout. So I can actually do changes within this auto layout. I can change the alignment. I can change the color here as well. So imagine if this was a plugin, I obviously wouldn't be able to do that because it's a completely, it exists in a completely separate framework. However, a widget exists as an element that's using Figma elements to create itself. So I can go ahead and I can do all of that. I wanna make this text bigger. I can just go ahead and actually do that particularly and I can make it bigger. Similarly, again, obviously this is not being preserved, but you can do all of those things. Similarly, as you can see, we have frame, we have another frame that's gonna contain the icon, then we have the number, then we have another frame. Now let's say if I wanna change some values within it. Um, obviously people who are familiar with React may know some of the code that's already here, but let's just actually review it. So it's saying that we have a constant called widget, which we're fetching from the Figma package. Then we have certain things that we're fetching from the widget uh, element that we called or referenced here from the Figma package. So we're gonna use the sync state. You can consider that this as a set state that people use in React. And then you have certain other elements as well, like the property menu, the auto layout. The auto layout is the element that you use to contain elements in Figma. So you can use the auto layout directly here as well to structure this content. So as you can see here, we're saying the well, this particular widget is gonna have an element that's gonna have an auto layout wrapped around it. Then it's gonna have an SVG, then it's gonna have a text, then it's gonna have another SVG. So really simple stuff. And on click of this SVG, it's increasing the count to one. So count if it's zero plus one, then that's gonna be one. One plus one, two. One, two plus one, three, stuff along those lines. If I wanted to increase this count, I can increase it to five. One other thing, especially if you're doing all of this constant development, instead of saying npm run build, ideally you should do npm run watch. Let me just go ahead and actually include this on the right. So let me just close the console. So if I do npm run, sorry, npm run watch, that's gonna watch for any changes that you make. So instead of one, I'm gonna say 10, I'm gonna save it. Now, as you can see, if I press plus plus, that's gonna increase the value by 10. If I do minus minus, that's gonna decrease the value by one, since obviously I haven't changed that. Similarly, if I wanted to increase the font size, I can just do the font size needs to be 64. I'm gonna save it and if we go ahead and actually let's say refresh it as you can see this is now 64. I can also choose what this particular refresh icon does as you can see the refresh icon actually is situated here this is the property menu the the menu that you see above is the property menu i have the item type i have the tooltip and stuff along those lines so i can say that this particular thing is gonna set the count to 15 let's say so I'm gonna refresh it, and as you can see, this now is 15. So without further going into too much depth, I want you to just go ahead today and wherever you want or whenever you're actually watching this video, if uh, there's anything that you actually are a bit confused about uh, in this particular thing, anything that you wanna talk about in terms of widget, definitely let me know in the comments. We're going to be creating our next powerful widget um, ourselves, like maybe a to-do list or maybe a, a table probably is a bit complicated or maybe we can do a table. We can do a course on creating a complex table where we can define the columns or we can even allow users to define which the number of columns and the number of rows and the type of data within it. It's, it can be really complex. So um, just take some time. Let me know if there's any particular widget that you would want me to create and we can go ahead and do that. That may be useful for us to even publish on the community so other people can get the benefit of that as well. Okay, so one other thing I'd like to show you are the APIs. So if you actually are on this page, which is the Figma widget, uh, I think this is the default page for widget APIs. You can actually um, reference some documentations, but the most important documentation is this API reference. So if you click on API reference, you can see the components that are available to you when you're creating these. So some of you might have asked like, how am I supposed to know that I can enter an auto layout, sorry, I can enter an auto layout like this, or I can enter an SVG like this, or a text like this, like how am I supposed to know that? Like, do you expect me to remember it? Well, <laughs> no, that's what the API is for. So if you have a look, you, can, you have these certain components that you can use, an auto layout, a frame, a text, a rectangle, an image, an ellipse, an SVG, and a line. You can also use other elements like an input field as well. And 
if you're concerned about, hey, how am I supposed to know about the values that I can enter here? Well, that's exactly what the API again is for. Let me just zoom in. I can go into auto layout and you can see all of the different values that are available. But if you just go to the bottom, you can see by default the values that are available by default here and some of the default values here. So the name is whatever, X, Y position, the blend mode, the opacity, the fill, the stroke, the stroke weight, corner radius, blah, blah, blah. Okay. And if I just had to show you, like again, as you can see, the spacing, padding, corner radius, all of those things are defined here. If I was to, let's say, introduce one element here, I can say, okay, opacity. I'm gonna go opacity and then I can make the 0.5. If I make it 0.5 and if I open the Figma file, uh, let me just go ahead and actually, sorry. Yeah, actually just go ahead and run the plugin again. So if I run the plugin again, as you can see, the opacity is 0.5. Obviously, it's not going to be 0.5 at the top level. It's going to be 0.5 at the at this level because it's on the auto layout itself. So again, this is how you can actually go ahead and know which properties to apply, so on and so forth, the spacing, padding, whatever it is. And you can use all of those things. If you want to dive deeper by yourself into this API, you can. But as we go through this whole course, we're going to be covering all of these things not all of these things, some of the things that actually keep coming up, some of the most common ones bit by bit. And hopefully that's going to help us understand how to create a widget better. So that's pretty much it. Let me know if you're interested about this playlist um, or if it's too complicated for you. And <laughs> I should just stick to the Figma design videos. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Do subscribe to hit the bell icon and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.